what's your flavor? What's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor? What's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor? What's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor? I make this black or in the cup by the name of the paper. This last thing was not good enough to the right thing. It can't be because I didn't think more about it. Hey, what happened? Oh, I just can't follow. I'm so exhausted. So am I. I've lost count on how many times we've done this. We've been practicing for hours. We really have to perfect these dance routines. Where do you find time and energy to practice, be a student teacher in math, and still be a good rating on your student? Well, I'm no superwoman. It's all about time management. And besides, I'm really excited and looking forward to next semester when I graduate from college. Now that really keeps me focused. Hey, such a nice pair of stretch pants. Thank you. It must be very expensive. I really don't know Angela. My father is a seaman, just sent this. Wow, may I see that? Sure. This is really nice. Just what I need for a dance festival next month. It's a pity I gave my extra one to my younger sister, Mikey. Are you sure you need to buy one? Yes, my mother gave me money this morning to buy a new bandana just like yours. Hi Angela. Hi. Hi. I heard what you just said. I have an extra bandana here and I can sell it to you for just the amount I bought it. Really? How much is it? That just cost 70 pesos. How much do you have in your purse? Um, okay. I only have 48 pesos and 50 centavos. My mother gave me 80 pesos this morning. I spent some of it and I only have 48 pesos and 50 centavos. And I still need some amount for my tricycle fare. I wonder how much money I had before mother gave me 80 pesos. Well, I think we got a problem this time. I really need to buy this bandana, but I don't have enough money. I can't recall how much I had this morning. Hmm, let's see. The unknown amount is how much Angela had before her mother gave her money. Well, we can solve that problem using variables. Variables? Variables represent any unknown value. We can use letters like X or Y. Let's solve how much money Angela had in her purse before her mother gave her. Let the variable x represent the amount that Angela had in her purse before her mother gave her money. So we move backwards. Let me present the other factors involved. 80 pesos is the money her mother gave her. 56.50 is the amount Angela spent today. 48.50 pesos the amount Angela has in her purse right now. Using the variable x, we can find what she wants to know by doing the following solutions. x plus 80 pesos is also equivalent to 56.50 pesos plus 48.50 pesos. Adding 56.50 pesos and 48.50 pesos gives you 105 pesos. x plus 80 pesos is equivalent to 105 pesos. Now, let us move 80 to the other side, giving us the equation of x equals 105 and 50 centavos minus 80 pesos. x is equal to 105 pesos minus 80 pesos. Therefore, x is equal to 25 pesos. The initial amount you had this morning was 25 pesos. Right. That gives us the unknown value. Yes, but my problem now is I still can't buy this bandana. My money is not enough. How much is the bandana? 70 pesos. And how much do you have in your purse? 48 pesos and 50 centavos. Using a variable, you will know how much money do you still need to be able to buy that bandana. Can you do that? Of course I can. Let x be the amount that I need to add to my money. Given is 70 pesos, the cost of the bandana, minus 48 pesos and 50 centavos, which is the amount I have in my purse now. Therefore, x is equal to 21 pesos and 50 centavos. That is the amount you will add to your money now. And that is how much you will lend me so I can buy the bandana. Okay, no problem with that, Angela. I want you to look your best during the dance festival. Okay, let's do a couple more examples and then we go. Okay. I'll even help you with your assignment. Thanks! Try this with us. Pablo bought 15 new books this year. He counted 16 books in his bookshelf. He lent 13 books to his friends. How many books did he buy last year? Let B equals the number of books Pablo bought last year. 
B plus 15 is equal to 16 plus 13. D is equal to 29 minus 15. B is equal to 14. Pablo bought 14 books last year. Keeping fish for amusement or for food is of ancient origin. Going back to at least 2500 BC when pond culture of fish was practiced by the Sumerians. The Chinese have bred the goldfish for centuries then introduced it into other parts of the world. The Japanese have produced new types by cross-breeding. The most prized variety has a short rounded body, a broad head covered with protuberances, no dorsal fin but with short double tail fin. Fish, which are entirely bright red, are considered best but white fish with red fins are much admired. The common color is bright orange and the fish grows from 6 to 12 inches long. You know what? We're so lucky to have you as our student teacher in math. You know so many things. Really? Well, thank you, Angela. Is it difficult to be a student teacher in math? Not really. All you have to do is be open to all possibilities. You know, math is not just numbers. It transcends to all aspects of our lives. I too would like to take up education when I enroll in college two years from now. Maybe take up math or English. Good for you. Our country needs many teachers right now. And I believe that education is the key to a sustainable future. By the way, I always see you come to this spot at least once a day. Why? This is my favorite spot in school. It reminds me of my home in Zamboanga where I grew up. Isn't it a dangerous place with bandits and terrorists going around? Of course not. It may be true in the hinterlands, but not in the lowlands. Okay. Oh, I have a question for you. So, is it more algebraic problems? No. Do you know where the first public aquarium was established? But that's a difficult one. I have no idea. In 1853, the Zoological Gardens of Regent's Park in London, England, put a collection of standing water tanks into a small building called Fish House, which became the first established public aquarium. What a smart girl! Hey, I have a great idea. Why don't we incorporate the movements of the fish to our dance routine? And I thought I was smarter than you. What's that, Angela? Mother asked me to make a list for everyday food supplies including their costs. And what do you have in your list? Well, Mother told me that I must make a budget list that will not exceed 250 pesos a day. She said that Father earns 14,000 pesos monthly but 6,000 pesos of it goes to the rental for partner. Are you having a hard time making the list? Yes, I just don't know how many lists I will make for everyday food consumption. Well, that is easy. Let us find the unknown value using a variable. Let x represent the number of days for which you will make the budget list. Given our 14,000 pesos, your father's monthly income, 6,000 pesos, which is rental fee for your apartment, and 250 pesos, the estimated budget per day. Now let's find a solution to your problem. Do you know the first step? Of course! I need to subtract the rental fee from the monthly income so that I would know how much budget would be left for food. That's right! Now you write it in a mathematical expression. Let x be the number of days the money will last if we allocate 250 pesos per day. The result will be equal to 8,000 pesos. Now we have 8,000 pesos equivalent to 250 times x. Divide both sides by 250. Thus, x is equal to 32 days. I will make 32 lists for everyday budget. But what if the amount we will spend exceeds 250 pesos? Let's say 280 pesos per day. Given the budget of 8,000 pesos for 32 days and the actual daily expenses of 280 pesos, how much more money will be needed? Using a variable in a mathematical expression, let x represent the amount short from the budget of 8,000 pesos. First, find the total amount spent for 32 days at 280 pesos daily expense. So we multiply 280 by 32. Then x is equal to 8,000 minus 8,960. Thus, x is equal to negative 960. The budget will be short by 960 pesos. This is indicated by the negative sign. Assuming 31 days per month, 
Let x represent the amount short from the budget of 8,000 pesos. First, find the total number for 31 days at 280 pesos daily expense. So we multiply 280 by 31. Thus, x is equal to 8,000 minus 280 multiplied by 31. Then x is equal to 8,000 minus 8,680. Thus, x is equal to negative 680. The budget will be short by 680 pesos. This is indicated by the negative sign. That is a big amount. Well, at least now you know how to budget things. You can now foresee how much you will be short in your list. How do you propose to prevent a shortage? Tighten our belts, I suppose. If only 8,000 pesos is available for food, then find out how much we can afford to spend daily by dividing 8,000 by 31 days. And that will come up to 258 pesos and don't go beyond that. Thanks for your help. Would you do me another favor? What is it? Can you come with me to the grocery tomorrow so that I can buy the stuff on the list? Well, if you're there with me, I won't buy an impulse and stick only to those we really need. Just what I thought. Please. Of course, why not? Thanks, you're such a nice person. Then after to the grocery, we'll proceed to the wet market for some fish, meat, vegetables, and maybe some fruits too. Then pass by Aling Nena's store and then... What else? Try this with us. Marla has 30 days to make three projects. How many days should she spend per project so she'll finish on time? Let D equals the number of days to finish per project. 3D is equal to 30. We divide both sides by 3. D is equal to 10. Marla should spend 10 days per project. What happened to you? You're not your usual self. I found a very powerful thing. And what is that? You wouldn't believe I can read your mind using this. Mm -hmm. Is that a lie detector? More powerful than that. Hey, are you some kind of a madame, Rosa? And where is your crystal ball? No, I'm not a fortune teller. I am talking about variables. Variables? Yes. Variables are powerful. They represent unknown values. Would you like me to try and read your mind using this? Hmm, yes, that's interesting. Okay, no pens, no papers. Just use your mind and follow the things that I will tell you. Ready? Ready. Okay, let the variable represent an unknown number. And we will use it for a think of a number game. First, think of a number less than 10. Second, add 5 to the number you thought of. Then multiply the result by 2. Subtract 6 from the result. Then divide the result by 2. Lastly, subtract the number you initially thought of. Now I can tell you the result each of you got. So what are the results? All of you got the result of 2. That's amazing! Is there some kind of magic? No, there's no magic. I used a variable. I will show you how it works using algebraic expressions. Angela, please write this down. Let x be the number you thought of. Then, add 5 to it. It will be expressed as x plus 5. Multiply the result by 2. It will be expressed as 2 times the quantity of x plus 5. Good! Now subtract 6 from that expression. Then, divide the result by 2. The next step now is to subtract the number you initially thought of. This would give you 2 as a result. So what was the number you thought of? I thought of number 6. See? The number that the variable x represents, it is the number you initially thought of. Therefore, all numbers from 1 to 10 would lead to only one answer, 2. Yes, that's right. All those numbers from 1 to 10 are called the domain of the variable. It is a set of given numbers which the variables represent. In this case, your domain is a set of positive numbers less than 10. If you replace x with any number less than 10, like those numbers you thought of, it will still give you the same result, too. Hey, this game is amazing! So, did you enjoy the game? Sure, sure you did. did! Try this with us. Think of any number. 
multiply the number by itself. Add thrice your number to the result. Then add two more. Divide the result by one more than your number. Then subtract two. The result is the number you initially thought of. First, I thought of the number 5, which we will represent as x. Then, multiplying x by itself gives us x to the second power. Add thrice your number to the result. Then add 2 more. Divide the result by 1 more than the number. At this point, we will factor x squared plus 3x plus 2. The factors of this expression are quantity x plus 1 and quantity x plus 2. Then subtract 2. Very good, Joy. Your algebraic expressions are well presented. Algebraic expressions? Yes. Algebraic expressions are presented by one or more variables and other operations, just like what you did in the paper. You have more than one operation. There's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What if there's only one variable and one operation? That is called an algebraic expression. All those you've written are algebraic expressions. See, what you did is not magic. It is simply using algebraic expressions. Wait, I'm so tired of doing this. There are so many pairs of numbers to multiply. Not me. What? How come we work so fast? We're doing the same assignment, right? Okay, I'll tell you a secret, but promise me you won't tell this to anyone, okay? Okay. I can multiply pairs of numbers between 10 and 20 by using only this pen and a magic spell. A magic spell? Uh, just kidding. Of course there is a technique that I use. Can you tell it to me now? How? Alright. If you will multiply a pair of numbers between 10 and 20, like this, 12 times 14, Draw a line to connect two digits, then multiply. So we have 2 times 4 equals 8. Write down 8. Then encircle the first number and the one's digit number of the second number and add them. So we have 12 plus 4 equals 16. Hence the product of 12 and 14 is 168. Here's another example. Sometimes you will need to carry. For example, 17 times 13 you'll need to add the number carried to the next two digits. But this can be explained using variables. How? We let the first number be represented by 10 plus x, and the second by 10 plus y. The two numbers will be the two-digit numbers between 10 and 20, where x and y are the unit's digit. If we multiply the expressions, we get 10 plus x times 10 plus y equals 100 plus 10x plus 10y plus xy. Grouping the first three, we get 100 plus 10x plus 10y. Factoring out the common factor 10, we get 10 times quantity 10 plus x plus y. Note that 10 plus x is the first number, and y is the unit's digit of the second number, and xy is the product of the unit digits. Thus, we multiply x and y and get xy. Then we add 10 plus x plus y. What about 16 multiplied by 14? Why don't you try it? Okay, so we have 16 times 14. Multiply 6 and 4, we have 24. Write 4 and carry 2. Then add 16 plus 4 plus 2. We have 22. Now you see the magic of mathematics. Come on, let's do some more pairs of numbers. I think I will have a great time with this. Try this with us. of months, I will soon graduate. I will miss this place and of course the company of my high school students. Hi, 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 
Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi, David. Hey, guess what? I'm buying more accessories for myself. But don't worry, I'll make sure I'll have enough money to buy what I need. And I can calculate how many things she can buy given the budget that she has now. It's good that you're using what you have learned about variables and algebraic expressions. Wait, I'll go ahead now. I need to go to the grocery store to buy groceries for a week. Angela did the budget this for this. I think Rachel help me with the budgeting. We also need to go home now, ma'am, because we still have more assignments to do. So, see you tomorrow then. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye, Bye ma'am. Drums.